With the opening of the new university, both myself and Carlos Gomez uh, were asked to sit on the MACE committee, um, and that was to design a new MACE for the university. He and I both insisted that our students be involved, so students from both Brownsville um, Arts and uh, Edinburgh Arts were involved in the design. Initially we started um, doing working on the design aspect of the MACE in spring of, I believe, 2015. Yes, spring of 2015 and what we did then was pretty much design the mace you know uh, we collaborated uh, I believe at the end there was five student designers that were working on it what I worked on the most was the design to actually build it on the 3d program and have it 3d printed to hand over to our sculpture department for um, casting. How many hours would you say that that design? Oh, I would say over a hundred. Usually over a hundred hours. And all of the parts of the mace uh, were keeping in mind uh, unifying uh, the imagery of the valley. This uh, head is uh, based on the palm. And then of course we have the seal. And these are the handholds. And on both, uh, both of the handholds have patterning on them. And this one has wind turbines referring to technology and the future of the valley. And this one has the Ridley turtle uh, talking about our bio biology and ecosystem. In the center is a helix uh, referring to our universities being bound together. And this helix is made in petrified palm. This section represents the river. And then down at the bottom is also a piece donated by Dr. Gonzalez. It's a sow shirt. And a sow shirt is a type of stone. That both the head and the seal uh, components of these are actually being produced by the art department. The rest of the mace has been produced by a woodworker in Austin. These seals were 3D modeled in the computer and then uh, tested as a 3D print in plastic and then they are printed in wax and lost wax cast. So this is the university seal as well as this is a, a dedication panel. And the head, this is printed from the jewelry area in, in plastic with our 3D printer. And one of our art students uh, from the foundry working with uh, Douglas Clark is casting our, the head in bronze. Quick tour, this is the sculpture lab. And, uh, there's always someone working. <laughs> For me, this process, after Vilma designs it and she casts it in plastic, I then bring it over to the sculpture lab and begin attaching wax sprues to provide the metal to her plastic sculpture. And then from there, I go into a process called a slurry and I begin dipping and sanding to create a shell, which comes out to about an inch all the way around it, so it becomes this big, thick blob and then I invert it to burn out the plastic and the wax, and then I replace it with the metal to make a new positive in bronze. We're casting metal here at the university, and it ranges in temperature up to 2100 degrees and up, depending on the metal we're casting. 
It's amazing that we have that, you know, uh, a foundry of our size. One of the first things um, I did after casting this, uh, he's actually attached to a piece of metal about this big, and I have to very carefully cut and clean it with grinders, plasma cutters, and uh, pretty much without damaging anything else internally. And then the tools start to get smaller and smaller as the cleaning begins. It's, it's an intense, labor-intensive work, my side of it. But it's, it's a really amazing opportunity, and I really appreciate that they considered me for the project. I was extremely ecstatic to be able to work on something this big. Um, when Donna presented, presented it to us and said, this is what we're gonna work on, I was like, this is never gonna happen ever again. I'm gonna give this my all, and I did that.